we're going to start with a review of what we were doing. So you should pause the video. You should synthetically divide this. Okay. Now remember that when you synthetically divide, you got to have zeros in columns for exponents you don't have. So for x to the 8th, that's 1. x to the 7th, 0. 6th, 0. 5th, 0. The 4th power is 0. 3rd power is negative 1. x squared, there's nothing. Regular x is nothing. And then we have 1 here. So actually, there's going to be 9 columns here. Then remember that the root of the divisor, the thing you're dividing by, is going to be what you use in synthetic. So 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4, 8, 8, 16, 16. This would be 32, 31. This is not going to come out evenly. One twenty four times two is two forty eight. So this is going to be two forty nine. Now, just to review what we did most recently, the remainder theorem says that if you get a remainder of two forty nine, then if you were to take two and plug it in, you should get two forty nine. And so this would be two to the eighth minus two to the third plus one, which when you work it out, it's 249. So a quick way to check to see if something divides evenly is to just plug that root in and see if it gets 0. In this case, it wasn't 0, so it doesn't divide evenly. All right, so today you're going to be doing a lot of long division. Here is the rational root theorem, and I want to do a little explanation here first. Okay, so let's say that you have a cubic written in factored form like this, 3x's. And we're going to pretend like we're foiling it out, but we're not going to deal with a lot of the details. What we're going to do is just think about what would be the very first term and what would be the very last term. Now, at some point, you're going to multiply x times x times x, and so you're going to end up with x cubed. And in our class, we called this the end behavior function. What that tells us is that my function will end up going like this, even though in between, there's probably a lot of curves and that intercepts and all that. But now we're also going to look at the end, which is negative 3 times 4 times negative 2. So that would be positive 24. Now, what's interesting here and what people have noticed is that when you talk about the x-intercepts, negative 4, 3, and 2, those points, those will all have to go into... 24. Because if you list all the factors that go into 24, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. What this means is that on this list of numbers, you should have the roots. Because when you FOIL it out, you have to multiply these numbers together to get that. So, we use this fact to kind of go backwards. Let's say that we had something like x cubed plus 6x squared minus x minus 30. Now, let's use what we just learned. First of all, I know it's going to be a cubic. I know, based on the leading term, it's going to be x, x, x. But we have to look at negative 30 and all of its factors to figure out what those numbers would be. So the possible numbers are 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 15, and 30. And also, it could be plus or minus. Okay, so how do we use this? Well, we go through and we start testing numbers using synthetic division. And this is why we learn synthetic, because it is a lot faster than trying to just long divide. So I'm going to put 1, 6, negative 1, negative 30, and I just have to try them. Now I know you're thinking there's 14 numbers. This is a lot of work, but it's better than just trying 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 30. 
and just going blind, we actually get to eliminate a lot of poss possibilities. So what I say is, please keep it organized. See, I'm writing the divisor over here. That means that the, the thing we're dividing by is 1. And just keep it organized. It may take a little bit. And one thing I've found from experience is don't erase your work. Because if you erase your work, it's hard to keep track of what you ruled out. So drop the 1, 7, 6. Now, this is not going to work because the remainder is not going to be 0. So let's just keep going here. one, this is negative one, this is five, negative five, negative six, and six. This is not going to come out evenly. When we just keep going. All right, let's try two. Two times one is two. Six plus two is eight. Two times eight is 16. This is 15. Well, look at that. Two times 15 is 30. And we found something to divide it out. I know that one of my answers is going to be x minus 2. So I could fill that in up there. Now the important thing is, once you divide x minus 2 out, you have something left over. This is x squared plus 8x plus 15. And the nice thing about this is, when you get down to a quadratic, you don't have to do synthetic division anymore because you can just factor this the old-fashioned way, x minus 2 x plus 3, x plus 5. That is factored. And we can double check. Hey, the roots are 2, negative 3, and negative 5. And negative 3 was on the list. Negative 5 was on the list. So this checks out. So here is a try problem. You guys should look and, and use the rational root theorem to figure out what are all the possible roots to this and see if you can't find one to divide out. Once you have found one, then you should start the, start the video. Okay, so we look at the rational root theorem, meaning we look at the last one and we think, what numbers go into 14? We also know that there's going to actually be four factors here. So let's start long dividing. 1, 1, negative 9, negative 7, 14. And I'm just going to start off with x minus 1 to see. 1, 1 times 1 is 1. 2, 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 7. That would be negative 7, negative 14. This comes out evenly. Well, look at that. We already have one factor that's come out. Now, the nice news about this is it doesn't matter which order you find your factors. Now that we've taken one out, we still know that with this remaining polynomial, 1, 2, 7, and 14 will still go into it. We just have to find the other three. So we're going to long divide now just to that remaining polynomial. Now, the bad news is we do ha even though we found that x minus 1 goes into it, we still have to check to see if it might go into it again. So let's keep going here. 1, 1, 3, 3, negative 4. This is not going to work. And just keep your notes organized. So I'm going to try now. Negative 1 as my k. This is not going to work out either. So let's just try x plus 2. Let's see if negative 2 will be the key. Whoops, <laughs> I am writing not the coefficients, I'm just writing the whole thing. So let's write this out here. That would be negative 2, 0. That would be 0. Negative 7, and this will be 14. All right. So we know that x minus 1 and x plus 2 are factors, and the remaining polynomial is x squared minus 7. All right, so we've gotten this far, and normally when we get about this far, we can actually just factor the remaining. But if you look at that, that isn't factorable. 
So the first lesson of this example is that you might have to keep going. If it's like a fourth power, fifth power, you have to do this process over and over until you've completely factored. The second point of this lesson is that sometimes you'll see something like this. And we can still factor that. It's just not going to be rational numbers. So what do I mean by that? Well, when you had like x plus 2 and x minus 2, that difference of squares came out to be x squared minus 4. So if you went backwards, say you had x squared minus 25, you're thinking the square root of this and the square root of this would fit the pattern. You'd have plus 5, x minus 5. Now in this case, it is kind of like a difference of squares, but you notice 7 doesn't come out evenly. However, if I wrote it like x plus root 7, x minus root 7, You'll notice it's still a difference of squares form, it's just that this, when you square root it, doesn't come out evenly. Another way to think about it, x squared minus 7, when is that equaling 0? Well, x squared equals 7, there are two answers for that. Positive root 7 and negative root 7. That's another way to do it. But just keep, in, keep this in mind and find some way that works for you because you're going to see that kind of form pop up many times. And so when you get down to the quadratic, you should be able to factor just normally, or you should use the difference of squares. So there's just one more thing that we have to discuss, and that's what happens when you have something like 2x minus 1 and x plus 5. Now, if you were to FOIL this out, the first term would be 2x squared, some stuff, minus 5. And using the regular rational root theorem, you would have 1 and 5 as your roots, plus or minus. Now if you compare it back to what we had here, negative 5 is indeed one of the roots, but the root here is 1 half. So where do we get fractions as for what we can test? Well, the answer lies right here, 1 and 2. Now this is the tricky part. When you're doing the rational roots theorem, it's now, if you have a number in front, it's now not just the factors of 5, but it's the factors of 5 with denominators of this. So think of this right now, that these are over 1, but then you have a whole new set of 1 over 2 and 5 over 2. So, for example, let's say you have 6x to the cubed plus blah, 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 and then you have minus 3. So, if you were just given this polynomial, 1 and 3 are possible roots, plus or minus, but then you have denominators 1, 2, 3, and 6. So, to write out all the possibilities, you'd have 1 half and 3 halves, plus or minus 1 third, and now, if I wrote 3 thirds, I could still write it, but that's actually 1, right? So I don't have to worry about that. One, plus or minus 1 6. And again, 3 6 I could write, but that's the same as 1 half. So the bad news is, when you have a number out front, you have much more possibilities. And we will practice more tomorrow on this fractional root. For now, be able to write out all the possibilities, and you should be able to factor like a quartic or even a quintic down all the way to factored form.